This is a quick demo of how I create cards for card games. Um, in this case, I'm going to be use, setting up a card to create it on the GameCrafter site. This file I've got here, this image, which I'll open up, is the template file that I downloaded from GameCrafter. Um, you should make your images the same size as this template. Anything in the grey area is definitely going to get cut off when they cut the cards out. Anything between the blue line and the red line is possible that it's going to get cut off. Anything within the blue line is safe. Okay. Now take a note here, you can see the size of their template file that they've provided. 825 by 1125. So I'll open up Inkscape because that's what I use for my cards. And I'll write a poem uh, while I'm waiting. Oh, here it is. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so this is our, our working frame, if you like. So I'm going to change the size of that to match that template. So that becomes 825 by 1125. OK, so that's altered this template, oh, sorry, this the borders of this document. Um, I'm going to open up the layers window. And I'm going to rename this layer to say template. Now I'm going to import an image, actually that template file. Here it is. And that's put it onto my template layer. Um, let me just zoom in a bit here using the plus key. My frame is the same size as this template, so if I match them up exactly, everything should be fine. I'm now going to lock that layer so that I can't move it anymore. I can't move accidentally move that template file. It's locked. Let's zoom out with a minus key again. Um, when I actually come to produce the card at the end, the final card image that gets sent off to GameCrafter, I can change the opacity here all the way down to zero, so that won't form part of the final image. Add another layer in here, which I'll call background. This will be the background color of the card. So if I grab this, make it red, and it can go outside the... <laughs> that doesn't look very red. Um, outside the frame of the document, that doesn't matter because we'll only be exporting the uh, the document page of 825 by 1125. Um, but I just want to make sure I completely cover the back of the card with my color. So what I'll actually do is make that white now and I'll lock that. So again, I can't accidentally move this frame. So if I, well, I can't even select it because it's locked. But again, I'm going to turn the opacity of that down for the moment um, just so I can see the template behind. But as I say, when the final card image is created, I'll turn it back up so you can't see the template. So let's add another layer in and build like a frame. OK, now I want to turn the background color down for now so I can see the template behind. But I'm on the layer above that, which is the frame. So I'm going to draw a frame again. Remember, I only stuff within the blue line is guaranteed to get printed. OK, and let's fill that with green so it looks roughly like that wiper salient frame I have. Again, I'll lock that so that means I can no longer accidentally move this or select it. Uh, let's add another layer. I love layers because you get such independent control with them. So we'll call this circle. As you've seen, I can change the, um, the opacity on any individual layer. So it means that when you get to your final compositing stage, you can decide how much opacity you want at each level for each object. It's really handy. OK, so I'm back on my new layer circle. So let's draw a circle in the bottom left corner and make it yellow. Let's have another one over here. Again, yellow, and we'll lock that. And then let's have, um, actually, let's unlock that and go back to frame. And let's have a, another frame at the top of the card, shall we? OK, 
Okay, and let's fill that green. Now here's a, an example of why you want lots of different layers. So if I make, I want to put circles on that top frame, I still want to make sure they appear inside the blue area. So by just while I'm working, I turn down the opacity there. I can now come in here on my circles layer, which I'll have to unlock, and draw a circle, and I know it's in the right section of the, the final image. So now I can lock that, go back to frame, make it full coloured again. And now I'm going to add another layer, call this title. And I can put the card title up here. Call it card title, strangely enough. Make it white. So let's uh, lock that. Just go back and check that that card title appears on the card in the blue area. Yeah, it does. So we'll turn that back up. Go back to the template. Remember, we don't want that showing, but we do want our fully white background to appear. So I'll turn that up. Um, so <laughs> believe it or not, that's the final card. So file, uh, export bitmap. Make sure I select page. That means that initial frame that we had on the page, that's what that refers to. And we'll call this fishy. So that's now exported it. If I look in that folder, I've now got a fishy image. And here it is. So you can see the odd bits that went off the side of that page, that document, are not shown. Um, and that's how I do it. I just keep adding layers and adding everything onto new layers. Um, which gives me a lot of independent control for them. And that's it. It's simple. It can be painstaking, but it is straightforward.